with, uh, 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 we have three acts in this section, uh, each of them doing a bit, uh, and it's all delightful, and please keep being your lovely selves. This next act, he absolutely ripped it apart last time he was here, so we had to rebuild the place, and not out of paper this time. Uh, and, <laughs> and so please welcome onto the stage, David Cullen! <laughs> Confederate candles. Remember them? <laughs> yeah, they were like Yankee candles, but we supported slavery. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, recently, a friend of mine told me that I'd wasted my life, and I think she's absolutely right. And uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a reason for why. Um, at the start of last year, I read an article in a newspaper that listed Britain's most popular supermarket cake. Now, would anyone here like to have a guess at what is Britain's most popular supermarket cake? Oh, it is the cafe cake! Give her a round of applause! In one! In one! Oh, I'll be honest with you. Two nights ago, I did this in Hull, and that was a good five minutes of the show. <laughs> Upside down? No. Buttonburg? No. Jaffa? What did you call me? It was great. It was really great. But luckily, you got it first time, so we avoided that joy. Um, <laughs> it is the caterpillar cake. Now, when I read this, I was genuinely baffled by it, because I have honestly no idea why we need caterpillar cakes. Like, why, why do we have to incentivise children to eat cake? <laughs> I've never given a six-year-old a piece of chocolate cake, and they've gone, but what's his motivation as a character? It's, never, it's like giving a heroin addict a needle, and them saying, but what's his name? It doesn't work that way. Now, when I read this, I was with a friend of mine who is Australian. I know, I've gone down in your estimations. <laughs> and she had never heard of caterpillar cakes, because in Australia they simply don't have them. Isn't that mad? Most popular cake in our society, never heard of them in Australia. That puzzles me. I, I posit the reason for that is that um, to an Australian, having a large insect in the house does not say happy birthday. <laughs> I think it says the phrase, do not go in that room or you will die. <laughs> about caterpillar cakes. Now, you might be saying to yourself, David, why are you calling them caterpillar cakes? He has a name. <laughs> and that name is? Colin. Colin, that's right. Well, I thought that as well. But it turns out that Colin is only the name of the cake if you buy it from Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> what you've done there is you've taken your experience of the world and ignorantly used it to assume how everyone else must live. It's exactly the kind of behaviour I'd expect from someone who shops at Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> The name Colin is owned by Marks and Spencers, owned by the owner of Marks and Spencers, Mark Spencer. And he will not allow any other shop to use the cake, use the name for their cake. So do you know what they had to do? They had to come up with their own names. And do you know what that means, guys? Marketing meetings. Marketing meetings where men and women in suits sat around big tables and pointed at pics of cakes and had arguments and deadlines, guys. 
I don't care too much about confectionery. You know, some people like Maltesers, some people like minstrels. I'm on the fence about it. I'm just playing rebel's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> but needlessly time and money consuming marketing decisions with little or no worth or value. You know I love those. I'm performing one right now. <laughs> know anything about caterpillar cakes before I started researching them. The only thing that I knew about caterpillar cakes is if you leave them in the cupboard for too long, they become butterfly cakes. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't hurt you, what hurt me? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I began where we all begin, of course, with Colin. Colin the caterpillar, old trusted friend. But one of the things that you might not know about Colin is they've tried to inject a node of personality into Colin by giving him a tagline. Does anyone know what that tagline is? No, right, it's up here. It's, he is what he eats. That's what it says, he is what he eats. Think about that <laughs> for a second. He is what he eats, is he? He, he eats what he is. What, what are they trying to imply? He's a cannibal, he's a cannibal caterpillar. Goes around eating all of the other caterpillars. Now you might say to me, David, we constantly tell children you are what you eat. Yes, but here is the key difference. Children aren't food. <laughs> Since you changed the context of something that is food, it makes him a cannibal. Now, I did this six weeks ago in York, and a man emailed me after the gig, and this was the crux of his argument. You can technically eat children. <laughs> I concede the point. I don't think you win any argument with the phrase you can technically eat children. Yes, you can technically children, but I think we can both agree that a good episode of Ready Steady Cook it does not make. <laughs> what have you brought? I brought a bag of rosemary. She's fine and she's a <laughs> Now, if you think they haven't thought this through, well fucking think again, dick bags, because it says he is what he eats there, but what's on the front of the box? That's right, it's a block of chocolate. It's what he's made of. So, but what does that symbolise? Is it a lung? <laughs> is that a liver? I mean, I mean, it's something cooked, isn't it? <laughs> so is that? Is that a fetus? <laughs> <laughs> now to understand why I can't get a job. <laughs> I go to job interviews and they go, "Oh, David, can you give us an example of thinking outside the box?" And I panic and go, "Um, yeah. What if a French horn worked on the same logic as a shoe horn?" They go, what? <laughs> it's a curved piece of plastic helps you slide into the French. Anyway, to a <laughs> But if he wants other caterpillar cakes to eat, then he is in luck. Because if you go to Asda, you will find Clyde the caterpillar. And Clyde is unique amongst caterpillar cakes, because Clyde has a girlfriend, Bonnie the caterpillar. <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde! <laughs> That's clever. and found a Fred and Rosé. <laughs> <laughs> now, Asda also have a, a dairy-free range. They're free from range, right? And that, they've, they've done a pun on the word free for the caterpillar cake. They've come up with Frida the caterpillar. Ah, oh, free, Frida. But I think they could do a murderer pun and a free pun. So this is what I genuinely said them. I think they could call it Egg Free Dharma. <laughs> yeah, named, named after Jeffrey Dahl, the Milwaukee cannibal. He is what he eats. <laughs> Which one of you cunts is the birthday boy? 
Curly and Carl. Curly and Carl are not good names for children's pets. Curly and Carl are two mates of your brothers who sleep on bare mattresses, yet somehow own a quad bike. That's <laughs> You go to Wake's Rose, you will find Cecil the Caterpillar. <laughs> fair play, Wake's Rose, fair play. Because what has happened here is businessmen have sat around and gone, how can we imply our cake is middle class? <laughs> Cecil, Cecil, of course, doesn't have a tagline. He, like all the staff at Wake's Rose, is daringly aloof. But <laughs> he's, actually just, he's actually just stalling for the best caterpillar cake, which is, of course, the curious caterpillar cake. Yeah, from the cult, the curious caterpillar cake. And you might be curious as to why I think it's the best cake. It's certainly not the name, is it? At least call him Chris. Or <laughs> no, it's the tagline. The best tagline of all time, which is down here. Great for all occasions. <laughs> Great for all, all occasions, is it? <laughs> Holocaust Memorial Day? <laughs> If Jeremy Corbyn laid one of those down in front of the senator, <laughs> walked away. <laughs> would, the, would the son be like, "Oh, do you know what we were wrong about him? That's a great choice." <laughs> <time." laughs> right. For all occasions. But actually, I'm wrong about this because if you look at the Japanese surrender on the USS Missouri <laughs> in 1945, yes. Sure, they signed the papers, but what's there on the table? That's the way it's a cover! Okay. <laughs> the moon landing? The moon landing? Yeah. <laughs> Some people say these pictures were fake, but what's that down in the corner? That's the way it's a cover! Okay. <laughs> Probably the depth of my research came to a head when I found this part of the Bayer Tapestry. <laughs> So obviously I'm going to have to recite it in all of you, so do bear with me. Um, for it was in the height of battle, archers of Normandy took up their positions and launched a volley of arrows upon the English, only for Harold to be struck at in his eye. Although upon close inspection, it was near arrow. <laughs> And so was invented the term Colin Eyes. When will the screaming inside stop? I'm 30. <laughs> You know, I shouldn't be going, oh yeah, the, the IKEA cake is called Sloog. But it's flourish on the next one, put it together yourself. I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be going, oh yeah, the Waterstones cake has got a costa in the middle of it for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been a treat and a pleasure. <laughs> Drive three and a half hours back to Newcastle now. <laughs> worth it, though, worth it. Was it worth it? Yeah! They say that a comedian is only ever as good as his audience. I'll be honest with you, I think you've knocked this out of the park. Um, <laughs> you got a high laugh rate, but also some really inventive ideas as an audience. <laughs> maybe, maybe not another 12 months till, like, till you come back. Until you come back. Okay, what all of them just burnt? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, right, um, uh, oh, I never know how to end gigs. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>